Welcome back Rat fans. This video is the top 10 ZX Spectrum games. The ZX Speccy played host to some of the best games of the 1980s. It covered a wide range of genres, but here is 10 of my personal favorites. These are games that look at only one vital ingredient, and that's the playability. If you're new to the ZX Speccy, in my personal humble opinion, these are the games you should hunt down first. I love Run the Gauntlet, but relax, don't panic, it's not number 10. This is just my thought process I wanted to share with you about which games I felt deserve that number 10 spot. It's really difficult to do a number 10 list. I, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Look at that nice big sprite for Raston and how fast everything zips along. Brilliant, what a brilliant game. It's a close call, but still not my choice for number 10. This one is an absolute fantastic conversion on the ZX Speccy. It's got the speed, it looks good, sounds all right, and the animation is fantastic. Seriously guys, what's not to like about this one? But, alas, it's still not number 10. Next up, Rambo 3. I played the absolute tape out of this. I love the variety in the levels. There's even an Operation Wolf style uh, level as well. The graphics are fantastic for a ZX Specky game. And this is one, another one that I come back to every now and again. Mad for it. Finally, number 10. Inspired by Dungeons and Dragons, set across eight varying levels of difficulty, you'll quickly find that strategy plays an important role in Rana Rama's gameplay. What's even more amazing about this game is the whole entirety is loaded in one fell swoop. In case you didn't know, Rana is Latin for frog. This cute green tree frog was born out the limitations of the ZX Spectrum, and the game is all the better for it. A fantastic game considering the limitations. Motor racing enthusiasts and petrol heads alike will be happy to see this make the list. And although I still come back to it, it's not my pick for number 9. The sheer speed of this Grand Prix game and complexity involved puts it miles ahead of the competition for the time. This really is a close one and I really wanted this to be number 9 in my list. That's the difficulty of doing a list like this. There were so many great games on the Speccy. I absolutely love this game. I come back to it on a regular basis and I still can't believe how good it is for an 8-bit title. What an absolute classic. I first played this on the Amstrad CPC. Before that I believe it was Driller that I played. This for me really is the best of the Freescape series. This was one to really get lost in and used Freescape to its full potential. What you are looking at here are the building blocks, the foundations for Rockstar's classic Grand Theft Auto. This is a game that has spawned many a monster hit. You basically drive through a city in real time on a 48k Speccy in a Lotus. I absolutely love it. However guys, this is my pick for number 9. Again, it's one I play the most, the one I come back to the most. What we get here is single screen based fighting action. It was also a pretty decent two player game as well. For me, this is more than a fighting game. It's a benchmark in how to fight. Greg Barnett, the coder, gave the world the blueprints and the gaming enthusiast has reaped the benefits ever since. Fist wasn't just about attacking. Defensive moves were integrated and took computer combat games to a whole new level. My god, how good was Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road on the ZX Spectrum? All eight tracks were crammed into a single load. With three player support, I'd have had no hesitation making this my number eight but something had to give as this is a 48k loader. The monochrome graphics also proved a little bit confusing at times. How is Wetley Man's even possible on the humble rubber keyed 48k Speccy? This really is a classy conversion. The dips, the hills, the sheer speed of this thing shouldn't be possible. As good as this is, it's still not my number eight. Wow, now this is absolutely immense. A high quality, great looking, fast paced, 
bobsleigh racing game for an 8-bit. It really does capture the speed and the essence of the sport. Or so I'm told. It's not my number 8, but it's a close run thing. Another fantastic arcade conversion to the humble ZX Speccy. Continental Circuit has it all. If I'm honest, it doesn't put a foot wrong. Maybe the sound and the music are the only things that hold this one back. This top 10 is absolutely killing me. Oh, I hope I'm making the right choices here. This is brilliant, but it's not the one. I'm going to say it, I prefer Super Hang On on the ZX Spectrum more so than I do in the arcade. The arcade came with that humping great big simulation of a bike that you had to get on. It was bloody uncomfortable and impossible to control. On the other hand, there was a sensitivity option on the Speccy and control was heaven. But it's not my number eight and we move on. Wow, stunt car racer on a 48k Speccy. This is the most dangerous driving you can get for your ZX Speccy. Forget the open road, this is the open stunt track. Health and safety completely goes out the window with this one and only such a game could exist in the 80s. Hold on to your horses, number eight's on its way. How could I not include Chase HQ? This is Nancy here. We've got an absolute blinder of an arcade conversion on the ZX Speccy. It might be covered in yellow, but the sheer speed, music, sound effects, animation, are like nothing you've ever experienced before. The argument still rages over which is the best conversion, this or the Amstrad CPC. All I know is that I love it on both systems. And this is one of my favorite games ever converted to the ZX Spectrum. I can't believe my thought process around awarding a game number seven involves kicking a football. But this is another one I keep coming back to. This and the other one, Emlyn Hughes. Match day two though, it's like a footy team. It demands my loyalty. And it's so much fun to play. It's just, it's unbelievable. But it's not my number seven. Now this is a tough one, Rex. I absolutely adore this game. I've played the absolute tape out of it over the years. It's really difficult, but once you get the hang of it, there's so much fun to be had. It's a fantastic Walkham Explorer and blaster to boot. I can't believe I'm not making this my number seven choice. Wow, Spellbound, a 128K version. This is absolutely unbelievable. I love it, I played it religiously. I don't play it so much these days, but every once in a while I do go back to it. It really is superlative one of the most addictive games on the Speccy. But stupidly, you might say, it's not my number seven. Probably one of the best, the ultimate two-player games you could ever imagine to play. I could never beat my cousin at this. I could beat everybody else, but I could never beat my cousin. He absolutely nailed it. It's not my number seven, but bloody hell, it's close. Proper slice of gaming history here. I've played this on everything, every system. I've even played it on the iPad, the, the, the new updated version. I can't believe there's anybody out there that hasn't played it. If you haven't, my God, you don't know what you're in for. I've played the sequel as well, but I still prefer this original. Despite my better judgment, it's still not my number seven. This is my number seven, Laser Squad. It could just as easily be my number one. I've played it as much as any game in this list. I've even played the expansion packs, and despite the age of the game, I still haven't tired of it. I still play it even today. Very sad but true. This is basically a board game with line of sight on your computer, with customizable squads. I still regard it as one of the finest 8-bit strategy games. Julian Gollop is an 8-bit programming god. How is anybody supposed to do a top 10 when there's so many high quality games? This is just ridiculous and probably one of the best arcade conversions that ever made it to the ZX Speccy. But it's not my number six. I love R-Type, I love Flying Shark, of Silkworm, so many great shooters on the ZX Speccy. But this is the one I had to add to the list because it's the one I played the most. It really is a fabulous arcade conversion for the Humble ZX Spectrum, but it's not my number six. 
Target Renegade is my number six. The love I have for this game. My cousin and I and a few friends would play this religiously. It wasn't until years later that I finally beat the guy with the pool cue at the end. But this has to be one of Ocean's greatest uh, games that they ever put together. The original is fantastic as well. It's difficult for me to separate them and choose a favourite, but it's also difficult for me to not love this game. Unbelievable, really is. It's absolutely fantastic to play. One of my favourites of all time. I did want to put a Dizzy game in this list, but Myth replaced uh, any notion of putting a Dizzy game in there because it's so good, it's unbelievable. I'm convinced it's one of the best games, if not the best, on the Specky. But as much as I love it, it's not my number five. This is an unbelievable game for the, for the price you would have paid for it back in the day. I think we got it on budget for something like $1.99. And it's one I definitely come back to because I'm yet to complete it. Head over heels. I don't come back to it as much these days, but back in the day when I had this, I played it day in and day out. I completed it again about four years ago. Tried to record a video of it, but then lost the video. It really is one of the best games I've ever played. Just on the Specky, on the 64, and on the Amiga, I think, as well, and the Amstrad CPC. I'm really struggling to think of a game i played more than this, but wow, just wow. And my number five? Yep, I've put it in the number four bracket because I rate Thrust that highly. And it still draws me in today. In fact, I think I play this every other month. The sequel is absolute garbage compared to this. But it's not my number four. I had to think long and hard about this one. I'd almost convinced myself it was my number four. It does everything I could ever dream of for a shooter. I love the music, the style, the animation, the controls. But it's not my number four. This is a, another early game I had on the Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum. I fell in love with it. It's fast paced, which is a vital ingredient for any shooter, but it's not my number four. Calling number four, calling number four. This was the only way, an unofficial way, to experience Star Wars The Forest of Endor, Return of the Jedi. You were basically on a speeder bike and had to navigate through the forest and take out the enemy. It looks very basic by today's standards, but trust me, it's still immense fun. When I'm tired or struggling for something to play and I just want a casual game of something, I look up and I reach to the shelf and there it is, Death Chase. What a fabulous game. This one took me by surprise back in the day because the movie apparently was absolute trash. But I picked this up on the, I think it was the Hit Squad label for something like $1.99 or $2.99. And it's one of the best 8 bit platform games I've ever played. But it's not my number three. I so want this to be my number three. It's amazing. It's arcade perfect. It's absolutely massive. To this day, I still haven't completed all the worlds. I can't fault it, I really can't. Ah, the pain, the pain. I hate doing these number 10 lists. I love this in the arcade, and I love it on the Commodore Amiga as well. Uh, the ZX Spectrum version, despite the monochrome and lack of sound and music, it's arcade perfect. The speed is there, all the levels are there. It's a truly magnificent conversion but it's not my number three. This is my number three, and I absolutely love it. Just listen to that music. And although it doesn't look it, it feels arcade perfect, and I love the speed of this thing as well. It might be too cute for some, and for me it's almost borderline, but as I mentioned at the start of this video, it's all about the playability, and this comes with bags of it. It's one of my favourite conversions as well, 
Um, I've played it on the 64 and other machines. And I always come back to this one. You can't have a top 10 list on the ZX Spectrum without including a Jack the Nipper game. That would be massively uncool. And as much love as I've got for the original Jack the Nipper game, it's the second one that I fell head over heels in love with. But for all that love, it's not my number two. Dare I say it, it's better than the arcade original and it's on the ZX Spectrum. Renegade is such a great, iconic game on the ZX Specky. I really wanted it to be my number two. Sadly, just couldn't fit it in in the end. Another near arcade perfect port to the ZX Spectrum. It's got everything, including a light gun. It might not be my number two, but those hostages still need rescuing. Get to it, soldier. This is definitely my number two. This is one of the games I love the most on the ZX Spectrum. It's got nice, big, detailed sprites. Robocop himself shouts out the prime directives at the beginning. And as much as I love the arcade game, this adds a little bit of a spin to it and turns out to be more playable, if you ask me. It's great on the Amstrad CPC as well. And I poked a stick at the 16-bit versions, but I think it's the ZX Spectrum that I always come back to. My God, what a great game. Probably the best arcade conversion on the Specky. It almost seems irrelevant having these honourable mentions uh, at the end like this because I've gone on so much. But I just wanted to shout out about Double Dragon 3. I think it's a really good game. Obviously it's not in the same ballpark as Renegade or Target Renegade. But I had fun. This is another one that I played quite a bit. I never completed it though. I got close. I know definitely I got close because I watched a, a walkthrough of it on YouTube. I was probably about five minutes from the end. Classic. Need to dig this one back out again. Ah, oh, this one is absolutely amazing. It should have made the list really. Just didn't know where to put it. Maybe I'll do a top 20. I'm convinced that this one would definitely feature. A timeless classic for the ZX Specky, this one. We've got a Stallone game on the ZX Specky, and it's an absolute blinder. This is a fantastic game. I absolutely love it. Completely unexpected for me. I've never seen the movie, but the, uh, the game is just simply a superlative. Now, Buggy Boy. I absolutely love this on the Specky. Uh, there's so many people that slate it, but for me, it's absolutely brilliant. I really do appreciate that, this game on the Specky. And uh, if I had a top 30, I think it'd feature. Now, this is one I played with my cousin all the time. And it looks terrible now. It looks absolutely awful, really basic. But there's bags of gameplay in this one. You just have to look beneath the graphics. We're going back real old school now to some of the first games on the Specky. And as this is all about nostalgia, why not? It's not my number one, but I hold it in the highest of regards. This is another game I love on the, uh, on the Spectrum. You can't beat a bit of Jet Set Willy. And it's another one of those games that I always come back to. You never tire of it. Sick in premise, but absolute bags of gameplay. The whole family all played Chucky Egg. It's one I play still as well. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It looks crappy, but the level design and playability is what counts, and this has got bags of it. I remember playing this with my cousin. I must have been about seven or eight. The both of us were absolutely, genuinely terrified. I'd go to sleep and have nightmares about this. Stupid now, but definitely one of the best back in the day. But ridicule me all you want. This is my number one favorite ZX Spectrum game. And it's the one out of all games that I play the most. It's the one I come back to the most. I don't even think it looks crap. It still plays a blinder. It's as addictive as ever. And I introduced my five-year-old daughter to this and she absolutely loves it. That's the test. That's the test of time. 
and the test of great level design. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do me the honor of subscribing. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe give us a like as well. Until next time, bye.